We as humans are very versatile. Our brain is able to interpret very quickly different scenarios or even fill in the gaps many times without us even noticing the difference. However, bots or computers are not like that. They are very specific with the type of the information they are supposed to interact with. So while we program them, we should make sure we help them deal with any unexpected cases. So let's build a bot that is summing up two numbers received on two parallel lists. We expect to find numbers here, but we cannot know for sure because we do not control the logic that generates these numbers. Let's say that these numbers are coming in from another bot, for example. So we have list number one. I have defined here already a few variables just to save time. We have list underscore number one, list underscore number two, and then a third list to save the results. And we have here the definition, we have new list, and then brackets of string, and then new string, brackets again, curly brackets, and then we have three numbers here, two, four, and six. And on the second list, we have a three, five, and two. So we want to sum up these numbers. We have a list where we would save the results. So let's build a bot and then we will run it and see what happens in case the numbers we expect here aren't really in the format we expect to receive. And we see what we can do then to deal with this uncertainty. So let's loop through the list and sum up the numbers and then save the results in the third list. For looping, we have to use a for each activity. So I will drag and drop it here. So we can start with the item in the first list and because we have two lists, we have to somehow know the position in which we are just to, to sum the elements together. So I can say for each item in list number one, but then I need to know to have a counter or a position to know in which position I am in the list just to be able to pull the element from the second list. So for that, we can have an assign We would just initiate here an integer, a number. So we press Ctrl K, we say int underscore position, for example. And we start with zero here. And after we do our activity, we will increase this here every, every time we loop um, via this, this for each loop. We have an error here because I just created a variable and it by default assigns it the type string. I have to change it to integer, so to a number, and then the error goes away. All right, so we have our for loop, and here we can use add to collection to sum up the two numbers to a third one. So let's look for this activity, add to collection, and here we want to go and First of all, specify the collection. It is our list of results. We will have for type argument a string. So we will save a string there. And then we have to specify the items. We check one more time the variables. They're all strings. So we can take the item in the beginning and convert it to a number because we want to add them up. So say here, convert, then point to int 32 in brackets item. So this should be our first number. And then our second number, we cannot use the item because the item is looping through the list number one, but we can use the position for accessing the right item in list number two. And for that, we can write list number two and in brackets int position. And this will return basically 
the string that is saved on the right position in list number two. So we would have to convert this to integer as well. And now we have basically a sum of two numbers. And because we said we will save it as string, we have to put everything in brackets and say at the end to string. And this should be fine. So we have our collection here. We can also log it on the output panel. Maybe just to see if we get the right numbers here as we expected. So we can just take this expression and put it here in the message just to see it on the output panel here when we run the automation. All right. And because we're using this position, we have to increment it at the end. So we will have another sign. So here inside the for inside the body of the for each, we would say int position will be int position plus one. So the next time it goes in this loop, it will increase the position and we will take then the next item in list number two as we go to the second item in list number one and so on. And you will parse the lists together. Okay, so let's run the code. Let's see what will happen when we run. So we have here the result. We have five, nine, and eight. Let's check our numbers. We have two, four, six, and here we have three, five, two. So two and three is five, four and five, nine, six and two is eight. That's correct. Now let's see what happens when we don't get as inputs what we expected. So what if this number here is not a digit, but actually a real string? Let's see what will happen with our robot right now. We run it and we get an error, an exception. The input string was not in a correct format. And that's when we tried to log the message. And in the message here, we were trying to convert to a number whatever we had on this position here in the list. And the string or the word TWO2 could not be converted to number. So that's why we had this exception here. So the bot was able to manage the first two items, but then it um, could not solve this exception and it quit with an error. So that's fine for debugging, um, but when we want to have something run uh, all the time, we have to deal with this uncertainty. And for that, there is an activity called try catch. And the idea is to wrap in this activity all the actions that we are not sure will succeed. So for example, this conversion here and the same one which is in the add to collection activity are risky because if we don't have real numbers here in these two lists, they will fail. So we can drag and drop this try catch here in the body of the for loop. And then this activity has two important sections, try, catch, and then a third one called finally. And the idea is it will try to execute the activities or the steps we define here in the try block. And then if there is an error, it tries to catch that error and do something instead of failing with an error. So it will suppress the error, but it will do then whatever we teach it to do. So if we look at the error type, we have remote exception wrapping system format exception. So we have a format exception error. First of all, let's drag and drop our activities here into try. So this one and this one, we said we want to, to try. And um, if there is any issue with this, we have to add a new catch or to, to catch that issue. And here we have different types of exceptions and we can browse for more types and we can eventually even find our exception here, this format exception. <coughs> it's this one here. So we can 
maybe add a catch for this specific type of error. If it's the wrong format, then do this. And what should we do if there's a wrong format? We basically want to show a message and inform the user that uh, this adding up cannot be done because it's the wrong format. So we can add a log message here. It will be enough for this example. And we say um, information cannot add up the two numbers. At least one of them is not a number. All right, so let's see what will happen now when we run this with the same error here with having two as a word instead of a number or digit. We run it. And we see the program doesn't crash anymore. It just does the two elements like before, five and nine. And then it just gives the error message that it cannot add up the last set of numbers. And it doesn't crash, it just finishes normally. And for this example, we just give a message here, but in another real life example, we can do something more complex here, like try to solve the error somehow, or try to convert the word to into the actual number with a dictionary or something like this. And that was it. We have learned how to prepare for unexpected cases and how to deal with uncertainty. If we do not control the flow of data coming to our bots, it is better to be prepared for the worst, or at least be prepared for any possibility. If you like this video, please hit the like button. This tells YouTube that this video is worth sharing with others. And spread the word amongst your friends about what you are learning here. Stay curious and see you next time.